once hauled over 4,000 tons up mountain grades and was reborn in 2019 to thunder across America again. But how did a 1940s steam giant survive in a world ruled by diesel and electric power? This is the story of Big Boy 4014, the legend that refused to fade. If there's one locomotive that truly defines American railroading muscle, it's the Union Pacific Big Boy 4014. This machine was engineered out of necessity. Back in the early 1940s, Union Pacific had a serious problem. They needed to move incredibly heavy freight trains, about 3,600 tons worth over the steep and unforgiving Wasatch Mountains between Utah and Wyoming. Existing engines just couldn't handle those grades without help, and double-heading two locomotives wasn't exactly efficient. The big question is, what did they do next? Build something so powerful it could do the job alone. Union Pacific teamed up with the American Locomotive Company in Schenectady, New York, to design a beast that could pull anything thrown its way. The original name was supposed to be Wasatch, but as the story goes, one of the workers scribbled Big Boy on the side of the first engine in chalk, and everyone instantly knew that's the name. It fit perfectly. The first Big Boy number 4000 rolled out in September 1941, by the time production ended in 1944, there were 25 of these giants. Number 4014, the star of the show today, was built in November 1941 and cost a jaw-dropping $265,000 back then, about $5.6 million today. It entered service that December and immediately proved itself as one of the most powerful steam locomotives ever built. Now let's talk about just how massive this thing really was. The Big Boy 4014 stretched 133 feet long, longer than two semi-trucks end-to-end, -end, and weighed nearly 1.2 million pounds. Its tender alone, the car that carried its fuel and water, held 28 tons of coal and 25,000 gallons of water, enough for barely two hours of full-speed mountain climbing. Its wheel arrangement, 4884, wasn't just a random number, it told you everything. Four leading wheels to guide curves, two sets of eight huge driving wheels that did the pulling, and four trailing wheels to support its massive firebox. So what was the secret behind its agility? An articulated design, essentially two engines joined under one boiler, so the front half could pivot on curves instead of derailing. When you really dig into the numbers behind Big Boy 4014, it's hard not to be amazed. Even by modern standards, this locomotive was a marvel of engineering. In 1943, during testing, 4014 hauled an astonishing 65 freight cars between Ogden and Evanston, Wyoming, producing up to 5,530 horsepower. But that wasn't its full potential. At speeds between 35 and 40 miles per hour, it could nearly reach 6,300 horsepower. Its pulling strength, or tractive effort, peaked at an incredible 135,000 pounds at just 10 miles per hour. Imagine a steel giant effortlessly climbing grades that would leave lesser engines stranded. On flat tracks, Big Boy could reach 70 miles per hour, though speed was never its main goal. Its true brilliance lay in the mountains, dragging thousands of tons of freight through punishing climbs. Its boiler operated at 300 PSI with over 8,000 square feet of combined heating and superheating surface, essentially turning water into raw, unstoppable power. This power came at a price. At full throttle, it consumed 11 tons of coal and 12,000 gallons of water per hour. On a standard 75-mile mountain run, it could consume 35 tons of coal and 35,000 gallons of water. A hungry giant indeed. Big Boy 4014 entered service in December 1941, right as America was entering World War II. It was immediately pressed into hauling vital wartime freight across the Wasatch Range. Originally designed for 3,600 tons, the Big Boys routinely handled 4,200 ton trains, maintaining 18 to 20 miles per hour on steep grades. Crews adored them. Despite their enormous size, they were surprisingly stable 
responsive, and reliable. By the late 1940s, 4014 and its sisters were reassigned to Sherman Hill, between Cheyenne and Laramie, Wyoming, where they ruled until steam's decline. 4014's last major service was in 1956, with its final run on July 21, 1959, having covered over a million miles, marking both the end of its career and an era of steam power. By the late 1950s, rising coal and labor costs, combined with efficient diesel-electric locomotives, spelled the end for these giants. Union Pacific retired the big boys between 1959 and 1962, but instead of scrapping them, they preserved history. Big Boy 4014 was donated to the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society and moved to the Rail Giants Train Museum in Pomona, California in 1962. There, it sat quietly for 52 years, admired but dormant. Then, in July 2013, Union Pacific stunned the rail fan world. 4014 would be restored to operating condition. The journey home began in November 2013, culminating on January 26, 2014, when 4014 began its 1,250-mile trek to Cheyenne. Every part was rebuilt or replaced, and the locomotive was converted from coal to oil burning, making it cleaner and easier to operate. But what was it like when 4014 finally moved under its own power again after more than half a century of silence? Well, by 2018, after years of patient restoration work, the world's biggest steam locomotive was finally coming back together. In March that year, reassembly was well underway, and the excitement among rail fans was electric. Then, on February 6, 2019, the big boy reached a huge milestone. Its boiler passed hydrostatic testing. In simple terms, this meant its massive pressure vessel was strong and airtight enough to handle the incredible forces it would soon unleash. Two months later, on April 9, 2019, the firebox was lit for the first time in nearly six decades. The smell of burning oil and the hiss of steam filled the Cheyenne air once more. Then, at around 9 p.m. on May 1st, 2019, something almost unbelievable happened. Big boy. 4014 moved under its own power for the first time in nearly 60 years. Imagine that sight, the world's largest steam engine, silent for generations, suddenly alive and rolling again under its own strength. The following night, it made its first official test run from Cheyenne, Wyoming to Nunn, Colorado, a short journey that carried enormous emotional weight. By the time the dust settled, the total cost of the restoration was estimated at over $4 million, but to the railroad community, it was priceless. Just three days later, on May 4th, 2019, Union Pacific officially christened Big Boy 4014 in Cheyenne, marking its return to active service. The timing was no coincidence. 2019 also celebrated the 150th anniversary of the completion of the first transcontinental railroad, the event that first united America's coast by rail in 1869. For its debut journey, Big Boy 4014 teamed up with Union Pacific's other historic steam engine, number 844, for a symbolic trip from Cheyenne to Ogden, Utah. And May 9th, at Ogden Union Station, the two locomotives stood side by side, recreating the iconic image of the Golden Spike Ceremony. Union Pacific Chairman Lance Fritz and Utah Governor Gary Herbert even tapped a ceremonial spike, honoring both the past and the rebirth of a legend. The celebration didn't stop there. Throughout 2019, the big boy went on a grand 5,000-mile tour across states like Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Wyoming, and California. Over 62 days, it pulled trains up to 23 cars long, the longest ever hauled by a restored big boy, and drew more than 2 million spectators. And just like that, steam had returned, not as a relic, 
but as a roaring, living monument to American engineering. But the question that lingered in every fan's mind was, after such a legendary comeback, where would the big boy go next? Well, it definitely didn't slow down. Over the following years, it logged 260 days on the rails and traveled more than 21,000 miles, visiting cities like New Orleans, Houston, Chicago, Sacramento, and Kansas City. In 2024, the locomotive embarked on the Westward Bound Tour, retracing parts of the original Transcontinental Railroad from Cheyenne to Roseville, California, and back, conquering the legendary Donner Pass and the Great Basin Desert along the way. Today, 4014 isn't just a train. It's Union Pacific's premier ambassador, a living, breathing connection to the golden age of railroading. Maintaining this colossal machine is no small task. Crews work year-round, using the same hands-on skills and techniques that steam engineers relied on decades ago. Greasing bearings with air-operated grease guns, inspecting the smoke box, and carefully monitoring every system. At the same time, modern innovations make life safer and more efficient. Computerized design and manufacturing, external oil-filling systems, and ground-level fueling eliminate the need to over its massive tender. In 2021, 4014 made history again by becoming the first mainline steam locomotive equipped with positive train control, allowing it to operate safely on modern rail networks alongside contemporary trains. Of the 25 big boys ever built, only eight survive today, and 4014 is the only one that still runs. Its massive size, articulated design, and raw power make it a living example of America's steam era engineering at its peak. More than nostalgia, 4014 inspires and educates, letting crowds experience the roar of pistons, hissing steam, and unstoppable momentum firsthand. Nearly 85 years after it was built, it continues to connect past and present, honoring the workers who built and operated it while standing as a symbol of American innovation, industrial achievement, and the railroad's key role in shaping the nation. So could Big Boy 4014 really handle those massive freight loads? Or does it look even bigger in person? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you're not secretly a robot from the future, smash that subscribe button so you never miss these roaring legends. After this, you can either check out our deep dive on vintage locomotives impact during war times or let YouTube surprise you with a video it thinks you'll love.